Good afternoon, happy Monday everybody and welcome to your 4 to 5. Yeah, thank you so much for watching us right here on WFMY News 2, Fire Stick, Roku and the News 2 app for your TV, phone or tablet. The big story today, we are keeping an eye on a chance for strong storms the next few hours. Monique, you've got it narrowed down to a window of a few hours. Yes, Chad, that is certainly correct. If you've been keeping an eye to the sky over the last several hours, you've been able to see that things are starting to take shape to be much different than they were just hours ago. I mean, I'm standing right here in the weather garden. You're seeing these leaves behind me a bit breezy here. As this front approaches us, the skies are shaping to be much different. Winston Salem really getting a very heavy rainfall, small but heavy pocket of rainfall at this moment. This is the look at Truist Field where you're seeing abundant cloud cover taking shape as of the start of this 4 p.m. hour. Elsewhere across the triad, things look fairly dry, but when we zoom in a little bit closer right around Winston-Salem, we're seeing this very heavy pocket of rainfall, very small patch of rainfall, but dumping a lot of rain. And elsewhere, though, like I said, looks fairly dry. But when we widen out our view, we're able to see what exactly is going on across the eastern portions of the United States. We have this broad area of low pressure right off the Carolina coast, pulling in moisture offshore. Elsewhere, when we look right around um, locations just south of the Great Lakes right here, we're seeing this broad area of low pressure as well. Once again, with a trailing cold front, I'm keeping a close eye on that cold front because as it makes its transition out of Tennessee and into North Carolina, that's when we certainly need to keep our eyes on the radar to expect what storm activity we already have been forecasting, but to see exactly what the triad should expect. Now, the timing of things have shifted significantly. Again, like I showed you, this area of low pressure, cold front crossing the area, but you can see the timing on things has definitely changed as compared to what we expected earlier, kind of already getting to see the front, but now it's pushing more around 5, 6 p.m. that the front will start to move closer to the triad and then continue into your 8, 9 p.m. time frame and then clearing out as we go overnight. Behind that front, though, high pressure and cool air will move into the mix for your Tuesday and your Wednesday. But then not too far away, another low pressure and an associated warm front will lift across our area for your Thursday and Friday. I'll be breaking all that down as we move forward during this 4 p.m. hour. Monique, thank you. Today, many Triad Health Department started offering booster shots for COVID-19 vaccines. Last week, the FDA and CDC signed off and on a plan to allow extra shots for people who got Moderna or Johnson & Johnson shots. Today was the first chance for people to get the added protection. It is important to get the boosters if you are eligible, and I think that that will certainly be impactful in improving our protection against COVID-19 infection. But I think what's also very important is that people who have not received any vaccination at this point strongly consider um, enrolling to get the primary series. Booster doses will be mostly helpful for reducing um, the, uh, the impact on on breakthrough infections, quote breakthrough. Um, so they, you know, which would mostly limit disruption to a person's life, having to quarantine or isolate or do virtual learning from school or not being able to go to work for 10 days. Most places are asking you to make an appointment before you get your booster shot. Just get in touch with your county health department or a triad health care system like Wake Forest, Navant Health or Cone Health to get one scheduled. Elementary school age kids are still waiting for the green light before they can get COVID-19 vaccines. Today, Moderna released new data showing its low dose vaccine was safe and effective in kids ages 6 to 11. The company is still waiting on the FDA to approve its shots for older kids. Right now, only Pfizer's vaccine is offered to kids ages 12 and up. Dr. Anthony Fauci says COVID vaccines for kids between 5 and 11 will be likely to be available next week. FDA approval of Pfizer's application for children could come as early as this week. WFNY News 2's I, Denise McMiller talked to experts about how to prepare their kids for their first dose. Well, as soon as approval is given, the vaccine will be available at a variety of different places, including pediatrician offices through Cone Health, like the one here, as well as pharmacies and even schools. But before taking your child to any of these places, doctors say it's important to have a conversation with your child. 
Now there's a chance your child has already heard information about the vaccine, some true and some not true. So experts suggest parents ask their children what their thoughts are and how they're feeling and to acknowledge any apprehension they may feel. Now when it comes time to actually get the shot, they say, although they're not the same, uh, pediatricians recommend you compare the COVID-19 vaccine to other vaccines like the flu shot. It's complicated, but I think children can understand that on some level. And when parents um, tell them and, and um, really mean that it's understand the importance, I think children can kind of feel that and, and, and really recognize that when a, a parent is pretty serious about this, they may not like it, but I think on some level they can absolutely understand um, the value in, in what we're trying to do here. Now the White House says they have enough Pfizer doses to vaccinate the nearly 28 million kids who will soon be eligible. Now for kids between the ages of 5 and 11, their vaccine dose will be one third the dose that adults receive. We are seeing some big improvements in our state's coronavirus hospitalizations. Today, the state is reporting just over 1,500 patients. It's nearly 200 fewer than the last time I shared this number on Friday. Today marks the 31st day in a row. This number has gone down an entire month. This streak started back on September 23rd when the state was reporting more than 3,300 cases. Now, that was more than double the numbers we're seeing now. Let's get to your four to five roundup happening right now. State leaders are hearing public comment about redistricting for the first time. They prepared new district maps after the 2020 census results came in. Redistricting impacts what areas congressional leaders represent. This process happens every 10 years after the census is complete. This year, North Carolina gained a one congressional set seat because of this population growth. Another virtual town hall is scheduled for 530 tonight. The North Carolina State Health Department says the vaccine cash card incentive worked. A study published today shows counties that use the incentive saw vaccination rates improve. Vaccine clinics across the state offered a $25 gift card to people who got their first dose this summer. Some also gave money to people driving others to get vaccinated. The study says more than 40% of people listed the incentive as a reason they got vaccinated. The state says it gave out more than 4,200 cash cards this summer. First Lady Jill Biden visited the Carolinas today. She attended a breast cancer awareness event at the Medical University of South Carolina. She also went to Joint Base Charleston to meet with military families. Biden visited Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, North Carolina last month. The White House says she will be back in Washington later tonight. Two women sued Kellogg's for $5 million because they say their strawberry Pop-Tarts don't have enough strawberries. They say the filling is more fruits like apple and pears than strawberries. The women say they're seeking $5 million because the product doesn't provide the nutritional benefits that it would if it contained more actual strawberries. The nutrition label says the filling contains 2% or less of dried strawberries, apples, and pears. All right. This is this is this is interesting. I, I mean, just have to laugh. I get it, but if you're trying to substitute actual fruits with pop tarts, then we need to have a crash course on what's healthy and what's not. Exactly. This is a yeah. pastry. I just this is so stupid. <laughs> it is. I, I it's a stretch. I don't, I don't know a better yeah. word for it. I mean, yeah. go for you know, have fun, clog up the the court system, spend your money on your lawyers to try. I mean, I I, I don't even know what to say about yeah, it. Yeah, I think like one pop tart is six hundred calories or something like really? that. I mean, it's a lot because anytime I want to go grab one because they are delicious, yeah. I'm like, I probably should have an apple instead or a handful of real strawberries. Absolutely. And I don't know about you guys, but if I'm eating a Pop-Tart, I am not expecting there to be nutritional benefits. <laughs> exactly. It's um, got, it has icing on it, okay? If it has icing, it's probably not gonna be good for you. Absolutely, uh -huh. it's like, I'm on a diet, y'all. It has strawberries <laughs> in it. I mean, it just sounds ridiculous, but I mean, technically they are right, so they might actually win this lawsuit. It would be, it would be strange. It brought me back to, remember back when somebody sued uh, McDonald's because they, <laughs> spilled their hot coffee on themselves and it like burned them and so they sued McDonald's. No. I remember and they that. They actually won the lawsuit and so now the, the the cups at McDonald's have like caution hot on written on the cups. You're kidding. I, I mean. It all comes down to technicalities. Yeah. I mean. Ugh. But what's your favorite type of pop tart? I have to ask. All of them. All of them. Yeah, like they're all good. I don't ever eat them though because we just talked yeah. about the nutritional benefits. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I think I like them all. Oh yeah, I like the blueberry ones. I was gonna say the wild berry. Ooh. They have the blue icing. 
Very healthy. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Or then maybe they, do you remember the, like, I don't even know if I make them anymore, the s'mores kind? S'mores are good. The yes. sundae, the, the hot sundae one is actually mm -hmm. good too. I like yeah. to put it in the microwave. Heat it up a little bit. Yeah, and heat it up, not mm -hmm. the toaster, and it just makes it gooey and mm -hmm. very I remember good. as a kid I would put them in the toaster, but then they would always kind of break. And so then you'd have to fish it out of the toaster because you'd only have <laughs> half of one. Oh, or wow. they burn around the edges. Uh -huh. yeah. I like that though. I like the burn. Oh, okay. It makes it kind of crispy. Oh, a little char. Uh huh. Do it. We'll burn it back. <laughs>Throughout the pandemic, we have shared so many stories of businesses closing and people losing their jobs. But WFMY News 2's Tracy McCain met a Greensboro woman who actually found her true calling. Jolly Havner was walking red carpets and living her best life in Los Angeles, California, right before the pandemic hit. God said, move back to North Carolina. That was the end of 2019. And then the pandemic hit March 2020. Mm -hmm. And so I call that the year of pivot, right? Because everybody went, ah! <laughs> what now? Havner decided it was time to shake things up. Their meal replacement shakes. Thank you so much. I was looking for a job, something that was going to help sustain what I was used to getting in PR in LA. And I could not find anything that was not a desk job or that met my needs. So she created one, a new business where she's the boss. We're here at Glow Nutrition. I am the owner and CEO of this company. Starting a health and wellness club during the pandemic was a risk. As Havner saw other businesses close around her, the profits at Glow Nutrition tipped the scale. Wow, I have doubled my uh, percentage. And she's doubling up on her commitment to helping the East Greensboro neighborhood where she grew up. I didn't have the best choices. I actually had a lot of, I would call it poverty of food. And in that area is like, where do we go eat? You know, it's the McDonald's up the street or it's the Chinese. I've just wanted to pour into my community like, hey, there's other options for you. You can have this and you can be that change. Well, Havner is actually an advocate for other entrepreneurs. If you'd like to reach out to her, we put her contact information in this story on WFMYNews2.com. Self-promotion can be a big part of starting a new business or venture, but sometimes can be hard to do. It can be hard to talk about ourselves or feel comfortable. 
but sometimes it's important to share your achievements with others, particularly related to your career success. And this is what Blanca Cobb, who has a master's in psychology, joins us to talk about today. So Blanca, let's go ahead and get right into it. What do people not understand about self-promotion? A lot of times people feel like their accomplishments, their achievements should speak for themselves. They shouldn't have to point it out to other people, but you have to realize this. Not everybody knows all that you have accomplished and then people forget over time. It's just not top of mind for them. And self-promotion doesn't necessarily mean that that's arrogant. So how can you self-promote without being arrogant? It's all in how you handle it. So you want to make sure that you're sticking to the facts and you're finding moments that are relevant for you to share that information. It's not a time to be bragging or bragging about it because a lot of that will turn a lot of people off. But if it's relevant, let's say you, you're starting a new business, you need people to know what you've done, mm -hmm. why they should shop, why they should use your products or services, what you've done in the past. That tells people, oh, okay, she does have some business experience. Oh, all right, he's done this before, something similar. It gives them more confidence to do business with you. And that's why you have to self-promote. If not, other people are not gonna know about you. I don't know why, but my mind goes straight to influencers these days. <laughs> um, so maybe talk about why is self-promotion important for success? Self-promotion is important for success because People, again, people are not gonna know what you've done or who you are if you don't talk about those details. Sometimes they'll remember the big thing that you've done, but not the details. And sometimes more that meaning is in the details. Let's say you're changing jobs or you're finding a new job. And so they talk about, oh, you worked on a project, but then you don't tell them that you had to pivot in that project during the pandemic. They're not gonna know those details like how you work under stress and pressure and change. That would be important for them to know. You might feel like, oh, okay, well, I'm bragging. No, you're not bragging. You're helping them understand the relevance of your experience and your accomplishments to what the next job is or that project. All right, Blanca, thank you so much. And you can continue this conversation with Blanca on her Facebook page. Four to five, we'll be right back.
All right, since I last spoke with you, I didn't have this, and now I do. It's just a light drizzle right here across our station, but that same bit of shower activity that I was showing you earlier in Winston-Salem moving very quickly through that area and now itching its way out of the county. And you can see even now in Guilford County, there are some light showers and even some heavy pockets of rainfall near Summerfield. Overall, though, the activity does not include any lightning, which means we're not getting any rumbles of thunder. This is just very heavy rainfall, but it is also not. This is what it is not that cold front. These are just some heavy rainfall that's coming out ahead of the front, but it is not the main line. My umbrella kind of blocking your view here. This is a look at the main line that is now taking across out of Tennessee and into North Carolina. This is the main line of storms that we want to keep a very close eye on. However, the good thing here is in when looking at this line, we're not seeing the very severe threat that we expected to see. And that is primarily because the day in the timing in which this line is crossing our area is starting to transition into the time of day where there's no longer a lot of sunshine as we are transitioning into nightfall. And so because of that severe weather threat is kind of sort of taking a back seat, but still of which a concern as we move into the next couple of hours. Here's a look at the timing of things. We're already starting to see some shower activity inch closer in some of our western counties across the triad so 4 to 7 p.m. timing there central portions of the Piedmont kind of moving through 6 to 10 p.m. and then crossing out of the area entirely through midnight so that's kind of the timing of things as to when you can expect for rainfall to move in this is look at one particular model kind of timing things out for you. Heavy rainfall and potential storm activity through 7 p.m. And then the main line kind of crossing our area 8, 9 p.m. This is just one model showing this. And then things clearing out. It looks as though by the 11 p.m. midnight time frame, things should be completely clear, giving way to a much clearer sunnier, cool day for your Tuesday. We know those cold fronts do a great job of bringing in cooler air behind them. And so for tomorrow, expecting temperatures to really be on the cool side in the low 60s. So not really a concern for your Tuesday when we talk about the severe weather concern or even just a rainfall concern at all. It's really concentrated for your Monday. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on this radar through the entirety of this 4 p.m. hour in case any sort of severe weather threat develops. But again, Again, as of now, we're just looking at some very heavy rainfall across the area in some pockets.
get to some trending stories this afternoon. Michael Jordan and Vin Diesel are getting a lot of attention online. We start with the basketball star who broke records himself. Now his shoes are also legendary. Yeah, check out these sneakers. Jordan wore this pair of Nikes during a game back in 1984, his rookie season. They just sold at auction for $1.47 million. Wow. The buyer was a collector who usually buys cards but wanted a piece of NBA history this time. Wow, and you might be thinking that's a lot of money, but another pair of sneakers were worth more. Back in April, a company bought a pair of Kanye West Nike Air Yeezys for $1.8 million, the most ever spent on shoes. So I think about like, okay, so obviously I can't afford to buy either mm -hmm. of those. And if I did, what would I do with them? Right, because you get them and then you're just going to like put them in a case and you're going to put yeah. them on a mantle. I mean, what do you do? People don't play when it comes to their shoes. You know, like true like sneaker heads, I right. guess they call them. Uh -huh. You know, when like the new Jordans would come out, people would literally wrap around the mall and camp out for those shoes. So but I mean, if you, you love the, shoes, you then wear those shoes. You're not going to wear Michael Jordan's no, pair, right? No, I feel like those are like collector items. You wouldn't yeah. want to mess them up or anything, but then right. also. What's the point of having a pair of shoes just sitting on a shelf? Right, are you just gonna invite all your friends over to come, like, come hey, look at the shoes? Hey, look at Michael Jordan shoes and then, that I bought for a million dollars. And then five minutes later, we move on to something else. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I, I don't know. Rich people problems. Rich people Rich problems. People problem. Do you have yeah. a bunch of extra money that you're just got lying <laughs> yeah. around? Just send it over here. Buy yeah, I don't know shoes. what that life is like, so. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, okay, let's get to this next story. This is really just tugging at America's heartstrings right now. Vin Diesel walked a beautiful bride down the aisle, and it wasn't just any bride. That's Meadow Walker, the daughter of Paul Walker, the late actor who died back in 2013. Mm -hmm. Vin Diesel and Paul Walker famously starred in the Fast and Furious movies where family was a driving theme. Walker got married earlier this month in a small ceremony in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. I first saw this on social media this weekend, and I just went, oh, that is so sweet. Yeah. I mean, it clearly shows how close of a friendship that they had and everyone on that cast had for him to be able to walk Mm -hmm. his daughter down the aisle and you know it had to have been such an emotional day you know mm -hmm. knowing that all the things that had transpired to, to get to that point um, sad but but a happy day too S sad but happy day and I think it also goes to show how your work friends your work community really can become your family mm -hmm. in that support system and we see it here at News 2 all the time that's true we are well, a News 2 family yeah <laughs> we will be right back
Good afternoon and welcome back to the 4 to 5. Whether you're watching on air, online, Roku, Fire Stick, or maybe even our Facebook page, you can't miss us. Now this afternoon, we are tracking the chance for severe storms. Monique, you're saying big weather changes are moving west to east over our area today. Yes, Chad, that is certainly correct. This is just one of those days as a meteorologist where you just kind of have to babysit the radar, watch and see how these showers develop. Will it just be a shower? Will it develop into something even more like a, a severe thunderstorm? We're seeing these heavy pockets of rainfall pop up over portions of the triad. This one right now, just not too far away there of Ashboro, handling closer to Randleman. And then as we look a little bit more northward, this one bit of heavy rainfall has been moving fairly quickly to the north and it kind of has been helping to develop some little small other pockets of heavy rainfall, but it's now crossing out of Guilford County. Now here's a look at the timing of things when we talk about the potential for severe weather. These rainfall pockets are not severe weather, but definitely still a keep an eye of concern on as we can move through the next couple of hours. But like I said, the severe weather threat, that's what everyone is really concerned about. Here's a breakdown on timing of things here. Starting as we close in on that six to even 8 p.m. time frame. That's when the storms will start to move into portions of the triad. We're really going to have to keep a close eye on as to how they develop. Are these severe storms or are they just some very heavy pockets of rainfall? So that's what I'm going to be keeping a close eye on. And then as we transition to 8 to 10 p.m., these storms start to cross the Piedmont. But again, are they severe storms or just heavy rainfall? The primary storm threats as we move through the next couple of hours will be strong winds and then that low tornado risk. I think that low tornado risk is starting to become even lower, but the possibility of some damaging winds has not. When you have a straight line of thunderstorms moving together, it is very often times that you see these winds rush down at the surface and spread out in straight line. That's why we call them straight line winds and they can produce damage. So I do expect for that to still occur as we go over the next couple of hours, but like I said, I'm keeping a close eye on how these storms develop. But overall, the winds will be fairly breezy as we transition into your Tuesday. Take notice how these pockets of winds are gusting up to maybe even 25 miles per hour by your Tuesday. So again, that's going to be a big talk of the town as we go throughout the Tuesday. It is going to be a breezy day regardless of the fact. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be dry, but it's also going to be breezy on Tuesday. I've yet to show the seven day, but I promise before the 4 p.m. hour ends, I got it for you. Monique, thank you. Let's get to your four to five roundup. Today, many triad health departments started offering booster shots. The CDC approved boosters for the Moderna and J&J &J vaccines last Thursday. All adults who got the J&J &J shot can get a booster two months after the initial shot. Adults 65 and older or un with underlying conditions or who work in high risk settings can get the Moderna booster six months after the initial shot. The CDC also approved mixing and matching vaccines. This means people People don't need to stick to what shot they got the first time. Film and TV workers held a vigil today for the crew member investigators say was shot and killed by Alec Baldwin on a movie set last week. Baldwin was holding a prop gun last Thursday when it fired killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injuring a director. An affidavit says an assistant director handed Baldwin the gun, but neither realized a live round was loaded. The Santa Fe County Sheriff is investigating the shooting. It's unclear if charges will be filed. More information is expected to be released. Wednesday. A cyclone bomb is crushing parts of the West Coast with heavy wind and winter weather. Some area of Nevada could even see up to seven feet of snow. The weather caused rivers and creeks to flood in North California. A mudslide shut down parts of a California highway. Another highway near the Nevada state line was only open to cars. The storm capped off what was California's driest year in more than a century. No relief at the gas pumps for drivers. Last week, prices hit a seven year high, and since then, they've only climbed. Gas Buddy reports on average gas prices in Greensboro are 14 cents a gallon higher at about $3.24 a gallon. Experts predict prices could slow down. The price of gas is now catching up to the price of a barrel of oil, which jumped a few months ago.
As you know, supply shortages are not new. We've been talking about them for weeks, but another part of the shipping delay is the high prices. Companies are also in dire need of warehouse workers and truck drivers. As Carter Evan reports, all of this is pushing some companies to the brink. Instead of being $39.99 retail, now it's officially $54.99. Outdoor toy maker Ed O'Brien is raising prices on some of his most popular products. You don't think people will want to pay that for this? I do not think people will pay that. We will lose most of our sales on this item now due to the retail price. But he says he has no choice. Because of the port backlog, he's paying more for shipping than ever before. The cost for a container shipping out of China was $6,500 from China to Denver. How much is it now? It's uh, $30,000. How much have you lost this year? We have faced over $2 million of unexpected expenses. His company's now on track for a 40% decline in sales. Nationwide, suppliers can't get items to stores fast enough, in part because there's a shortage of warehouse workers and truck drivers with more than half a million job openings. Companies almost certainly won't be able to fill all the roles they hope to this holiday season. Andy Challenger with outplacement firm Challenger Gray and Christmas says companies are trying to entice workers. Amazon is offering signing bonuses up to $3,000 and starting wages up to $2,250 an hour. Walmart and Target are offering free college tuition. What it's mostly doing is hiring away workers from their competitors. And that's why we're seeing some of the highest quits rates that the country's ever recorded. For Ed O'Brien, there are even bigger concerns if things don't turn around. We've already had a round of layoffs, and I obviously would expect more the way that it's going. Carter Evans, CBS News, Denver, Colorado. It's moving day. Today, Guilford County Animal Services started transferring dogs from the old facility to the new one. And we were there as some of the dogs were sniffing out their new home. It will be a week long process of getting all of the approximately 200 dogs and cats over to the new facility on Guilford College Road. This new building is 30,000 square feet with everything you can imagine a shelter needs. It can hold up to 550 dogs and cats and has six dogs, a dog adoption areas and two cat adoption areas. The facility also includes space and equipment for every medical need like spay and neutering. Director Jorge Ortega says it's been a long time coming. And it's always been like, yeah, wait another two years, we'll get there. We're here. And now we're all like, oh my God, it's here. It's actually happening. We're actually moving. Ortega says he thinks this move will have a positive impact on both people and pets in the county. I think it's a new beginning for animal welfare in Guilford County. Um, I think it's just changing the landscape of what animal control, animal welfare is within our community. Now this new shelter will open to the public on Monday, November 1st, so a week from today. Ortega says as they await for the new beds to arrive, any blanket donations would be great. I had the opportunity to go and see all of this. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really was all of the art that was up and how they have everything placed and it's just going to be so great when you right when you walk in there's windows to see some of the Aww. available dogs that are up for adoption and there was this one and we just we kept blocking eyes uh -oh. and i kept saying oh no <laughs> i'm gonna come gonna home a with a dog <laughs> yeah it, it was I, awesome i can't even imagine how much work it takes to transfer those animals mm -hmm. i mean you saw it firsthand i mean I imagine it was quite the operation. Yeah, it looks like they had them all in each individual kennels, which they were taking their time. And that's something that Ortega really expressed. He said, we don't want our stress to, you know, mm -hmm. transfer to them. Um, so they're taking their time. That's why they're taking a week to do all of this, to get all the animals over. But um, yeah, they, I could tell it was a lot of work. Yeah. It's such a beautiful building. And also for someone that might be coming in to look for a pet, it just seems so calm and relaxing mm -hmm. and lots of sunshine from all those different windows. Yes. Just seems like it would just be a very smooth process. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you got to see the video of it. Hopefully you did. Um, it will be online if not. But they have this wonderful dog run out front too. So mm. when you drive up, you see all these dogs that are out there and some, you know, volunteers are out there playing with them. It, I just think it's just wonderful. I mean, obviously I have a heart for animals though, so. And I'm, I'm so happy that this is coming to fruition too because they've spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to get this project off the ground and trying to get this new shelter because it's badly needed. I mean, the old one has has outlived its days. Yeah, he said that a lot of things were kind of falling apart and it mm -hmm. was time and he said they've been hopeful for this and it's finally here. Yeah.
move-in day. Aww. That's great. Beautiful story. Well, let's keep the good news coming. When good things and bad things happen in your life, what do you focus on? As Coach Lamont explains, the dark moments often take over and eclipse the good. Look closely at this piece of paper. Now, what do you see? Many of you focus on the big black dot right here in the middle, right? But how many of you focused on the rest of the page? The black dot distracted you from seeing the entire page, which also exists. This is how many of us look at life. We only see the dark moments, making them the center of our attention. In many cases, this is all we see. We rarely see what could be if we simply changed our focus. There's more room to draw the life you want. The dark moments happen, but you won. You are still standing. Those moments could have destroyed you, but they didn't. Now this is an indication that you must now focus on the other areas, the unwritten, untouched areas of your life, because there is more story to be told. This is Coach Lamont reminding you to have your best shoe day. I'll see you tomorrow. I think it would be so easy to focus on the dark yeah. moments because they might be at the forefront of our mind. They're the, mm -hmm. the ones that maybe attracted the most attention or you know garnered the, the most emotional response, but there's a lot of other good things out there. It makes me think of a newscast. Like say if you're in a newscast and you mess up on one story, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I messed up on that word. I said it wrong. And then you start messing up on other things mm -hmm. when it's like, we still have an hour and a half of news to go. You <laughs> right. have to keep going forward instead of getting hooked onto that one thing. You gotta look at the bigger picture. Absolutely. Yeah, that is, I mean, so relevant to life mm -hmm. because a lot of times we do get focused on the negativity or the bad things that happen. And then you're just in this bad mood all day mm -hmm. because of it. So you just really need to focus on the good things. Glass half, half full instead of half empty. Yes. I like that. That's good. We'll be right back. <laughs>
A tough day for Panthers fans still trying to understand the ugly loss against the New York Giants. Amanda Ferguson joins us now to break down the four game losing streak the team finds itself in now. Amanda. The Panthers lost to the New York Giants Sunday 25 to 3. It was a loss that even saw Matt Rule pull starting quarterback Sam Darnold. Darnold was 16 of 25 for 111 yards with an interception when Rule made a QB switch in the fourth quarter. Now, despite looking for a spark with backup quarterback PJ Walker, the offense was still not able to get anything going. After the game, Rule described the mood as disappointment all around as the losing streak continues. Unbelievably disappointed uh, in our coaching staff and myself, our players, the entire Carolina Panthers. I thought the defense hung, hung, hung tough for a while, um, but in the end, you know, uh, some, some really well thought out but simple things that they did beat us. Now, Amanda, you've been following the games all season. Uh, this week was sad, but what stuck out about this week's loss in particular? Well, Stacey, I'm going to be like all the players. They always say no loss is a good loss, but this one was exceptionally bad because they lost to one of the worst teams in the league by 22 points. They only kicked a field goal in this thing. And so I, it's one thing if you start out the season on a bad note and, you, you know, you lose four games right off the bat. But when you start out undefeated, I mean, we were 3-0 uh, mm -hmm. for the first three weeks into the season. One of only a few teams that were undefeated and now all of a sudden to kind of go the exact opposite way. Very frustrating for fans, uh, obviously players and coaches too. Um, but and sometimes you wonder, you know, is it Christian McCaffrey? Is he the reason mm -hmm. him being out? Is he the reason that they're just not able to do anything right now? What do you think of well, that's, that's the point I was going to bring up. Yeah, you're not having Christian McCaffrey out there, but you're not losing this much just because of one player. I mean, Sam Darnold threw seven interceptions in the last four games. That's right. not Christian McCaffrey's <laughs> fault. Yeah. Oh, he has man. receivers. He's got other running backs to mm -hmm. go to. They just can't do anything out there right now. I guess on a brighter note, you still have those diehard fans that believe they're still going to the Super Bowl despite some of these losses. Yeah, they, they hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fingers it's crossed. Still keep so maybe not the Hopefully, Super Bowl, but they they're around. right. There is still some time to turn mm -hmm. the season around and you can there watch is. them do it. WFMY News 2 is giving Panthers fans the chance to win two tickets on two. We have two tickets up for grabs for four upcoming games. Here's how it works. First, go to WFMYNews2.com. On the homepage, you will see the story that says play and score Carolina Panthers tickets on WFMY News 2. Click that story. Once you're in, click on the hyperlink that says play two tickets on two trivia here. There are five Panthers trivia questions this week. Play our Panthers trivia and you're entered to win a pair of tickets to see the care or to see Carolina host the New England Patriots on November 7th. You have from now until next Monday to log on and play. Trivia closes next Monday at 630. What's nice is you can play as many times as you'd like. The more you play, the better your chances are to win. And once trivia closes, you will need to watch WFMY News 2 at 11 p.m. next Monday, November 1st, to find out the big winner. Remember, this is only the first of four ticket giveaways, so you have several chances to win. Log on to WFMYNews2.com. Play Panthers trivia for your chance to win two tickets on two. Good luck. We'll be right back.
One of the many things that I love when tracking weather is the ability to check out some cams across the state like this one at Appalachian State where the skies are blanketed with clouds. They've seen a little bit of rainfall. Well, maybe not a little bit abundant rainfall. Unlike here in Greensboro where things have been mostly dry. When I show you it on the radar, you're able to see where the front is currently. And then we also see some other areas that have been seeing rainfall as of now. But like I said, the main front has not moved into the triad yet. We're just getting some leading showers that are coming out ahead of the front. The main line of storms is just crossing over that Tennessee North Carolina border. When I zoom in a little bit closer, just right around Reedsville, there's this very heavy pocket of rainfall, not seeing any lightning with this yet, so not calling it a thunderstorm. It is just some very heavy rainfall, really strong, potent shower, but it does have some very strong wind gusts along with it. So if you are anywhere in this area, you are at least dealing with some heavy rainfall as well as some strong winds. Now, when we talk about the temperatures, we are still on the relatively warm side for this time of year. 77, 75. These are some warmer numbers and even the dew points uncomfortably uh, in the 60s. And that's making for a much more of a muggier feel that you would expect for very fall time of year. We would expect fall crisp air, but just ahead of a front. Oftentimes you do get those dew points to spike up to those more humid like numbers. So here's a look at that seven day. I have yet to show it to you for this 4 p.m. hour, but here you have it behind the front. We're going to get cooler numbers. It looks as though temperatures are going to be changing significantly, but they're really not. They're staying in the 60s and even dipping down to some barely even 60s on Saturday. So if you plan to head out to uh, Greensboro or A&T's football game, make sure you certainly bundle up. Still ahead on WFNY News 2 at 5, COVID-19 vaccines have dominated the headlines, but right now is the time to get a flu shot. What health experts are seeing this flu season and why they say they are giving out more flu shots right now. How are you? One, two, three, four, five. Hi there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. Hey there, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island. Hey, Callie. Mic check. One, two, three, four. Mic check, Jalen. Mic check, Jalen. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six.
for my two cents. Is Halloween the best holiday? I know many of you are probably thinking, what about Thanksgiving or Christmas? And I agree, there's no other time like the most wonderful time of the year. But hear me out, okay? Halloween is the one time of year adults can play dress up and be whoever they want to be. You can even put the entire family in coordinated costumes. You better believe we have ours ready to go. There's also a ton of free candy and whatever your kid doesn't eat, it's all yours. There's pumpkin carvings, pumpkin patches, pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin everything really. And Halloween doesn't have the same pressure as Christmas. There's pressure in decorating. You've got to get the tree down and put up all the lights on your house. I see all the families who decorate their homes so beautifully and elaborately, and I just want mine to look that way too. There's pressure in taking cute family photos to use for Christmas cards. Oh, and then there's actually sending those out and on time. And then the pressure in giving everyone the perfect gift. I know I'm already stressed about that. Now, don't get me wrong. I do love the holidays and celebrating Jesus's birthday, but when I really think about it, Halloween is much more spectacular than it is spooky. With all the holidays coming up, maybe this is a good reminder to take the pressure off the Christmas season. Let's look at the positives and put our energy into making the holiday season about family, fellowship, or faith rather than all the pomp and circumstance. Maybe that's the trick to enjoying the treat of this time of year. That's just my two cents. That's your four to five. WFMY News 2 at 5 starts right now. Clouds are gathering in Greensboro while a line of rain and storms is making its way to the triad. Meteorologist Christian Morgan is tracking radar and Christian, could some of these storms become severe? Yeah, guys, that's what we're watching, especially as we go into the dinner time hour and through the early evening hours. We're going to watch for a line of showers and thunderstorms coming over the mountains right now to turn severe as it pushes through the Piedmont. So where is that line right now? This is the cold front right now coming across the mountains and with it is